Hello everyone, Randy Harrington here. This is an interview that I did a sit down with uh, Denny Coleman. I have interviewed him before uh, on a Zoom meeting, but this time I visited him at his house, uh, camped on his property, heard him and another real estate broker tell some stories of Bigfoot encounters on the property there. But this here is a specific story of Denny uh, back in uh, when he was a, a young man, uh, a teenager, in Summit, Mississippi. And uh, it's, it's uh, a very uh, terrifying story, really. But uh, I want you to listen to all the details in this fascinating, fascinating encounter. But so, I, but I never got a response. When when I was interviewing you on the Zoom meeting, uh, you didn't tell me that you had an encounter in Mississippi. Yeah, well, you know, thought, when you were well, younger. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's my main one. So that 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 also involved your brother. Yeah. But you know, I was just basically telling the stuff here. You know. Yeah, this, yeah. For this, me, that's happened here. So but, so your brother actually got to see it, but he yeah. he thought it was you messing with him. Yeah. Can you yeah, run that one by my, me? Him and my cousin. Yeah, I can. Um, whenever uh, well, I grew up in Louisiana, um, Jonesville, and uh, was raised up mostly in Jonesville, lived in Faraday and Vidalia, and uh, I was uh, going in, in that, well, I was in eighth grade, and uh, I was in band. Uh, we uh, had just finished the school year there, because the reason why I remember that so well. This is because uh, I did a band concert and uh, there were people from like Louisiana Tech and LSU came there and they were going to give me a scholarship. And I was so proud, you know, that I was going to get a scholarship. All I had to do was graduate. I was going to get a scholarship. And uh, I told Daddy about it and Daddy said, well, sorry, we've got, we're, we're moving. We're moving to Mississippi. And uh, so uh, we loaded up. Yeah, for reasons, uh, Daddy, he, he was in trouble with the electric company because he'd been stealing electricity and uh, trying to, you know, take care of his family. But uh, anyway, he was in trouble, so he, we had to go. So my uncle lived over there in Mississippi, and uh, they found a house, an old house place, and it was on 40 acres. Uh, the house place was on 40 acres there, and then surrounding it was just nothing but like the National Forest, just virgin timber as far as you can see. Big old pine trees and oaks. And, um, we got there we, on that place, got up in there, started cleaning it up. The very first day we was there, we went in the house, and uh, when you walked into the living room, there was poop all over the floor in the living room. And, you know, we just automatically assumed some hobo or squatter or something, you know, was living in the house but uh, it didn't make sense why they pooped in the house. But we got it all cleaned out, got it mowed down, started, you know, living, you know, just our normal stuff. And uh, the very first time I saw one there, uh, I was, they were around the perimeter of the house that was the old split rail fence around that. And uh, so I'm propped up on the fence and I'm looking at the back end and it was a pasture and um, on the back end of the pasture, uh, I was watching some big white cranes on the back end of the pasture. And um, and just all of a sudden, this gray blur comes out of the wood line and just, it was on all fours. Scoops up one of them cranes and goes back in the other side. But when it scooped that crane up, it stood up and went in the woods. And, uh, I told Dad, I went and told Daddy, I said, man, Daddy, you can't believe what I just saw, and I don't know what it is. And I told him what it was. He said, well, son, I just really don't know what it is either, because uh, he said it sounded like a big wolf, but you, you said it stood up. He said, wolf don't stand up. So anyway, just kept on going, you know, about our business and stuff, just living, doing things, and I was quite the adventurer, you know, 16 years old. I just started venturing out a little further out, a little further out, and this was this was during the summer, you know, right before school started. And um, 
So I went back. Oh, it had to be a couple of miles back, back behind the 40 acres. And I found a place back there. It was a beautiful, it had live oaks and these great big live oak trees, huge things. And their limbs would literally come into the ground, come back out. And you could walk on them limbs. And I used to just go back there and spend a whole day just playing in them live oaks. Well, I ventured out a little bit further out and I found a pond, almost like a little small mini lake. And uh, so shoot, I'm gonna go back there and start fishing. Went back there and started fishing, started catching fish. And uh, so I was going back there a, a lot. And uh, well, at this one, this one day, I was back there fishing. And uh, I'm sitting down on my butt, and I'm fishing, you know, just cork fishing. And um, I had this weird feeling. I looked up and on the other side of the pond. There was this great big gray hairy man squatted down on the other side of the pond looking right at me and uh man i didn't know what to do i was scared to death i'm sitting there and he just squatted down there just looking at me and um so i just started trying to think so i set my pole down and started standing up and when i started standing up it started standing up too it was like it was mimicking me stood up when it stood up it just like kept going up and it and everybody always asked me well what did it look like I said well the best way I can describe it it was a big gray hairy man his hair wasn't fur it was hair I mean, it was just just kind of just long stringy hair coming off of him you could just see through the hairs them eyes that's what he jumped out at me mostly was he, there was these great big dark eyes and uh and he was just piercing me he was just looking at me and uh, and all this probably happened 30 seconds maybe not even a minute at the most my heart's racing and it's like maybe survival kicked in and i and it just come up on me well this thing's just gonna come around this pond it's going to get me. So I started going this way. And I'm turning this way and I'm going. Well, he starts going this way. Like he, like that's the way you were going to go? So he was going to go that way? Yeah, he was coming around this way. Well, I know if he gets around this way right here, then he's got me. Because, I mean, there's no way that I can get away. So I'm easing this way and he's easing this way the whole time. I'm going this way, he's going this way, he's still looking at me, he, and, but he's not turning like, he's walking and he's looking at me like this. And uh, as soon as I get to a spot that I think he can't see me, I take off running. And I bust it hard and fast as I can. And I found that the, there was a trail, it was just no game trail, and I hit that game trail and I'm just booking it as hard as I can. And right before I get to the house, my little brother and cousin are right there in the edge of the woods. And they're trying to build a fort. And I come up on them, and I didn't want to scare them. I just told them, get in the house. I told them, I told them, I said, Michael, get in the house. And, uh, and I get to the house, and right about the time I just open up the front door, they bust in behind me screaming, just screaming. And uh, Daddy and my uncle, they're trying to calm them down, you know, and say, hey, what's going on and everything. And uh, they just kept screaming, we thought it was you. We thought it was you. And they was looking at me saying, we thought it was you. And they, they finally got them calmed down. My cousin, he actually uh, used the bathroom on himself. And um, they finally got them calmed down enough, and then they was able to tell what happened. Well, they thought that I snuck around behind them and then I was going to sneak up on them and scare them because I had a gray shirt on. I can remember I had a gray shirt on and, um, and it was a it, it was like a sports shirt. It had a number on it and uh, and they said that we was laughing because we was going to turn around and say we got you 
And when they turned around, it wasn't me. It was him. But he wasn't squatting down. He was standing up. And he was he was right there, right there on top of them. I'm talking about from here to the wall there. You know, a good 15, maybe 10 feet. And uh, So he thought he was still chasing you? He thought he was still chasing me. And he came upon your brother and, and your cousin? He came upon them. How old were they? Uh, let's see, I'm, I was 16, my little brother uh, 12. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 11 or 12 years old. Can Before we get any further, can you tell me what part of Mississippi this was in? Yeah, it was in Summit. Just outside o of Summit? Outside of Summit, Mississippi, five miles exactly, because I would jog five miles because uh, I was trying to get myself in shape for football, and I would jog five miles to the store that was in Summit and five miles back. So do you know, was it was it southeast, southwest, northeast, northwest from Summit? I've tried my best to find it on the map, and Summit looks nothing like like it did back it then. It did then. I mean, it's actually... Uh, it's probably the suburbs in the, the area that you yeah, lived in now. Uh, probably so. Uh, I, I remember it was a dirt road, you know, that we lived on. And um, and I remember that it was exactly five miles in the summit. I can remember uh, when I would leave the house. If, if the house was facing um, like east-west, it would probably had been east, uh, east of, uh, or no, actually our house would have been west of Summit. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to where at this point your dad and whoever, whatever else adult was there was starting to bring everything to calm down to yeah, take it up yeah, to hear what happened. Got to calm down and, uh, and they said, you know, what did you see? And they, they saw the same thing I saw. They said it was a big hairy man. Uh, standing there and they ran and when they ran it ran right alongside of them but it stopped right at the tree line in front of the house and the tree line in front of the house was only probably about a hundred foot to the house so it stopped there daddy looked at me and I told daddy I said that's what I was trying to tell you and I told him the story, you know, I went to the pond and uh, my fishing pole is still there, I'm sure. Because I never went back. Uh, if the pond's still there, I guess it would be, unless they covered it up or something. But uh, but I told him that what happened. Well, him and my uncle, they got the guns. They went out to the woods and of course we went with them. And we're all looking around the woods and asking Michael and them, you know, where was y'all at? Where was it at? And sure enough, I mean, there was these hairs, these long, silky gray hairs. And some of them had a reddish tinge to them. Wow. Um, and so they gathered them all up. They put them all in a bag. And I'm talking about it was a lot of hairs. And they gathered them all up and put them in baggies. Did you and your dad ever have a a, a, a conversation about your previous sighting of the gray one snatching the uh, yeah. oh yeah we did because uh, I mean we had other encounters um, different types of encounters um, like I, I said you know whenever it did this right here it started um, being intimidating it was throwing stuff at the house every night you know it would get in the wood line right there you know and it, it would just make these whistles these whistle sounds out there and uh, did it for a while you know it threw stuff at the house it threw um, and it was obvious that it broke the limb out of the tree because it was a uh, you know it, you know when you see a storm hit and and it breaks the limb off a tree how it how it kind of is, is um, real fresh on the bottom side it took a limb and a, a big limb i mean i'm talking about a limb a big limb it took that and threw it and we had an old tin roof through that and it hit and it went into through the tent on the roof it stuck it in the and through it and we had to go up there and patch that and um, it did that for a long time and, uh, and when i'm saying a long time uh two or three weeks you know, it was just st almost steady. 
I mean, it, the, we had a, a blue leopard cur that we had to put her on a leash. And um, she would just sit there and just go crazy, just barking right there at that tree line. And you couldn't see nothing out there. But Mama, she said that whenever she'd look out the kitchen window, she could see something right behind almost this shadow. And it's like it was just pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. And then all of a sudden, it just quit. Just stopped. Every, like, like it decided it couldn't run y'all off. Everything went to normal, just totally normal. And uh, school year started, started going to school, playing football, um, and uh, it was getting colder. And uh, basketball season had started, so I put a basketball goal up out there. We had a, it was an old, probably a, like a 20 by 30 old garage type shop building. Uh, it was open on the front side and on the back side had a great big window, open window, not not glass or anything, and it's just an old uh, garage. We didn't even use it as a garage, and uh, but it, it actually had electricity out there to it. And uh, we, uh, well, I would go out there, and I put a basketball goal up, and I put a drop light up, so I'd go out there and play basketball at night. And uh, so I went out there one night, and I uh, went into the front of the garage, went into the front of the garage, and uh, the plug was right by the window, so you had to reach in, plug it up. It's like this. So I reached and grabbed it, plug, was fisting to plug it in, and something reached in through that window, grabbed my arm, and pulled me. But it, it didn't have a grip. It just slipped right off. Pulled me up against the window, and I fell down on the floor, on the ground. It was just no dirt floor. And I crawled out. And I crawled out and ran to the house. And I was screaming. And uh, Daddy, he got the light and the gun. Well, he got the light and the gun and took off out there. And this thing, you could hear it running across that field. It was just doom, 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 doom. And it just had this whistle. It was just whistling at us, this really high-pitched whistle. So at this point, you didn't have to convince your dad. He already knew. He knew. Because oh, yeah. of what your mom said oh, yeah. and everybody's story, he already knew that there was a, a Bigfoot out there. You may not have known it was a Bigfoot, right? but but it, it was something. It, yes, he, so, he so. knew it was something, and uh, he knew that um, he talked to some of the, uh, my uncle had some friends and stuff, and they talked about it, and uh, they had actually had some experiences too. Um, and uh, so it all just kind of, well, Daddy said, well, we've got one in our place. Did you ever have the guts to speak to, say, like anyone you befriended at school? Yeah. Did, did, did anybody from school who lived in rural areas have any stories to tell? Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the whole area there, everybody seemed to have some type of experience of that. Um, and um, my science teacher, uh, he actually worked part time for the, the University of Mississippi. And, uh, I took it upon myself to take the bags of hair and I gave it to him. Well, I never got it back. And this was in the early 70s? No, no, no. This was in 1983. 83? Okay. Yeah. yeah. 83. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, I gave him the hair and I never heard. He, he said, I'll take it to the college. And, uh, but he never did uh, answer me back with anything. Wow. But anyway, getting to the end of the story uh it started again after that started throwing stuff at the house again uh started just just basically just being intimidating all over again and uh, we was in the house and daddy and them they was downstairs watching tv we had a wood stove and uh i went upstairs to go to bed when i went to bed well i got woke up because i couldn't breathe and uh, my room was full of smoke. And uh, I, come, I ran down the stairs, and when, when I say stairs, this was an old, old 1940s built house, probably. Just an old put together house. It had shingles on the outside of the house, uh, the old shingles on the outside of the house thing, uh, just real poor. And uh, 
but uh, I come downstairs and told Daddy the house is on fire. And we went outside and sure enough, the house was on fire. The stove pipe was knocked off. And uh, the next day, of course, after we got the fire put out, we looked and it throwed a big limb up against that stove pipe and knocked that stove pipe off. We packed up and moved. And that was it. So in retrospect, with all of these wonderful, wonderful detailed encounters, when you first showed up there and the place was full of poop, now do you suspect it was his poop? Yep. And he, I do. that and was and his my place. my sister, she, she, um, she had an experience when we all did, and I never did even tell that part of the story, but it actually came, tried to come in the house. He was living there. It was his poop. Yeah. And he was... But it, it what doesn't make sense to me, as big as he was, where you went into the house, it was an old lean-to um, that was... I mean, my dad, he had, he had to duck to go in to get through the front door. Well, it just goes to show you yeah. how comfortable they are on yeah. all fours. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, apparently I now because I do vividly remember the poop and it was large. It wasn't, you know, just like these little bitty poops. It was big poop and it was human-like poop. It wasn't like pile of poop. It was- That's like, why you thought like, it was a squatter. Yeah. That was was, we, Isn't we, that fascinating? We thought it was a human, you know? That was certainly a, a tribute to the, how aggressive he was trying to get y'all out of there because- so he, he, did, he did his job without, yeah. without hurting anybody. Yeah, uh, isn't that fascinating? Yeah, which I guess, if he would have wanted, really wanted to have got me, I think that he could have. You know, I don't think he could have. I think he could have saw me fall down. He could have just come right around and got me. I mean, no problem. I didn't, but he scared me enough. I didn't go back out at night after that. That was it for me. Wow. Yeah. And uh, and to this day, I I will not uh, during the daytime. Yeah, I'll go out on a property or something like that, but you won't catch me walking out of the woods at night. Well, yeah, and rightfully so, yeah. rightfully so. You know, it took me a long time mm -hmm. to get up. I, my encounter, I yeah. was in the cab of my truck, so I had the safety of having a truck b barrier between me and it, but it it, it, it changed me. Sure. I mean, it changed me. The, sure. f the fear of something that big with that much muscles, if I ever see another male like that without the, being mm -hmm. in the safety of my vehicle, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to be able to take yeah. it. Yeah, and, and people have asked me as far as, you know, the physical aspect of how it looked. And I said, well, it's not it, it was a he. There was no doubt about it, it was he. Um, big, broad shoulders. But not like what you see, like the, the patty, you know, how it's like bulky all the way down or barrel. They just had big broad shoulders. He had a V, it was, it was a V line, but he had bigger, stronger looking legs. Um, wasn't furry at all. It was just more like. Um, just a covering of the skin. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some people, you know, that probably have more hair on them, um, but um, but that was, it was long. You know, it's obvious that, you know, you can see it. But you could actually see that it was skin underneath the hairs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and this was summertime, so when I when I had that, I don't know, I didn't see him again as far as physically seeing him again in the winter times. So I don't know. Maybe. Like yeah, would 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 the fur cover change? Right. For the season. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. But yeah, now these that I saw here, they were pretty. Yeah, you know, quite a bit of hair on. Wow, fascinating. Yeah, that is. I appreciate that. That's really just. Yeah.